and hello welcome back uh, today gonna continue uh, turbulence modeling the video series and we want to continue uh, the discussion about the whale model more adapting local eddy viscosity model so in the last video we said that uh, we want to correct predict the correct wall behavior using these tensors so this actually produces a y squared behavior uh, um, turbulence viscosity varying with y squared I think uh, from the wall so yeah you have okay this this uh, quantity varies with y square from the wall but this quantity behaves with uh, varies with y cube from the wall so this is the correct behavior that you want okay this is the correct behavior you want for your uh, eddy viscosity anyhow so uh, you want you want something to be uh, yeah you want something to be uh, of this uh, regard, I mean, of this uh, form near the wall, so that you have your correct y cube behavior. However, the problem with this is that uh, this this is actually in the wrong units. Okay, so you the thing is that uh, you have this quantity, which is uh, s i d s d i j s d i j to the power of three halves. This is actually in the units of frequency to the power of three over uh, to the power of six. So if you take a look at the um, if you take a look at what SI, SDIJ is, for example, you can see GIJ being used here, and GIJ is this del UI, del XJ. So this is in, GIJ is in the unit of per second or in frequency. Since you have a square here, SDIJ is in the units of frequency squared. So what is the units of this? Um, S D I J is in the units of G squared, which is frequency squared. You put this inside the uh, you know, you put this inside the equation here. You put this inside the equation here. So you have a uh, frequency squared here, frequency squared here. Then you to the power have it to the power of three over two. So two times two times three over two that will give you six, the power of six. So it gives you the correct magnitude behavior, but the units are all wrong. So what what uh, what can you do? Well, you want you want some quantity with uh, okay. You want some quantity with magnitude okay. Or we have we use this thing called order of magnitude. So it's script O, I believe. Order of magnitude one, but uh, with correct units. Okay, so you want some magnitude with order of uh, some quantity with order of magnitude one, so that it does not change the magnitude of this thing, but it gives you the correct units. So what you want in the den denominator is frequency to the power of five, so that the whole function itself has the units of frequency, so that the units will match with the turbulent viscosity, right? Because turbulent viscosity is meter square per second, so you want this. Uh, you want this term here to be in uh, per second. This one is in meter square. I mean, in length scale anyway. I, I'm using SI units here. So you want the bottom to be in frequency to the power of five. So this 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 was chosen with the consideration. Okay, this is the the strain rate tensor again. This uh, mean strain rate uh, tensor to the power of uh, five over two or what what have you inside those brackets. This has the correct units of uh, frequency to the power of 5. And also, this, this term is actually on the magnitude of, on the order of magnitude of 1. So what does it do? When you, when you have SDIJ, SDIJ divided by 1, it will still give you roughly the correct behavior. Okay, so you have a quantity here that's roughly equals to 1, but it corrects the units. So this is what the intermediate uh, intermediate uh, term looks like. So you have y cubed behavior plus correct units. Now the problem with this even, I mean, even with this correction, there's a problem with it because at the wall, this, this term here, the denominator actually tends towards zero. So there's a problem of numerical instability at the wall so that this denominator actually goes to zero. So to try and correct that, you want you want something, 
you want a denominator that does not go to zero at the wall okay you want a denominator that doesn't go to zero at the wall preserve the units but also uh, has order of magnitude of one so I will use script O script O order of magnitude one uh, at the wall so the solution was this you add this quantity to the wall so this term never really goes to zero at the wall so this doesn't go to zero at the wall but the the thing is that uh, it yes even though it's never going to zero uh, and the quantity is so small that when you add this to uh, this in a denominator it doesn't really change the order of magnitude by much it is still on the order of magnitude by one and it doesn't affect this y cube behavior and of course you want to check the units so this is in the units of frequency squared this is in the units of frequency squared so you put uh, you put this in and you take it to the power of five and four you have a frequency to the fifth power so these units are correct so and it ends up that uh, you your function here you you have this function here okay new t equal to blah 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 opt this this function here becomes something you will see on the uh, website okay so you have sdij sdij to the power of 3 over 2 3 over 2 and the mean rate of strain tensor here to give you the correct units and wall behavior this one is just kind of here to stabilize the denominator so that this term doesn't go to zero at the wall so this is why the the uh, damping function so to speak it looks like this okay at the at the uh, at the wall so it gives you the correct wall behavior all right now the other question is of course this cm this uh constant right so what what is the correct value of this constant now uh of course when you take a look at the paper based on the uh, best fit of experimental data Original paper says that 0.55 to 0.60 is good for Smagorinsky coefficient of 0.18. So remember in your Smagorinsky model, your Smagorinsky coefficient, it will be depending on the flow situation, it can go as low as 0.1 to 0.25. And it all depends on the flow situation, uh, especially and it can even depend on the grid size as well. Okay, so Smagorinsky coefficient, okay, may not be 0 0.18 for all flows. So it depends on flow type and grid size. All right, so if it depends on flow type and grid size, the Smagorinsky coefficient will change. So if you remember uh, how how we can calculate Smagorinsky coefficient dynamically. You recall how we can calculate the Smagorinsky coefficient in a dynamic manner. It will depend on the grid size and of course the, the strain rates as well. Because you see the filter filter width happening somewhere in the function of the dynamic coefficient. So that's what it truly depends on. Uh, but anyway, this one doesn't have that uh, dynamic modeling to it but it's good for the wall anyhow okay so uh, the Smagorinsky coefficient isn't always Smagorinsky coefficient isn't always 0 0.18 it can go to 0 0.1 okay so uh, what what is the default model coefficient in uh, you see a CFD software CFD software you you see coefficient CW equals to 0 0.325 why is that the case well, uh, if you take a look at the slides over here, I have I, I put the description and uh, the link in the description. So it actually this actually corresponds to a Smagorinsky coefficient of zero point one. So um, this is good for I guess bounded flows. Okay, and if you actually look at uh, some of the papers online, 
for example this one which uh, is from Monash it says that the smart Gorinsky coefficient of 0 0.1 actually helps to give you a good uh, law of the wall or log law of the wall uh, correlation with the velocity so this is actually good for the wall good for this is good for bounded flows where there's a wall good for bounded flows so we see for for this this particular paper okay you can go and look it up yourself the uh, pipe flow is being used here and the smart Gorinsky coefficient is approximately 0 0.1 and um, yeah, this Margorinsky coefficient is about 0 0.1 and this is very uh, of course there's a Vendrist function there to help with the damping artificial damping but 0 0.1 is good for the wall and since this this uh, the whole point of having a wall adapting local eddy viscosity model is so you can model wall flows better they set the CW uh, equals 0 0.325 how does the number come about uh, well um, yeah, there, there are some complicated calculation, but uh, from this slide share, uh, slide share again, the links are in the description. Uh, hopefully, it will still be on. Uh, from this slide share, it, it shows you the correlation that uh, smart Gorinsky coefficient is for 0 0.1, about there. That will correspond to a wall coefficient of 0 0.325. This gives the whole uh, whale model, the wall adapting local viscosity model, very uh, well suited for. Uh, predicting uh, flows near the wall even in complex geometries so that's it uh, and of course in the this these are some source code that you can see using open form uh, just paste it in the link just but I'm not going to go through too much of them uh, yeah or rather just ignore it yeah anyway uh, yeah I'm not gonna I'm gonna, not gonna put that yeah, I can put I'll put that in the description, but yeah, just 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 yeah, I'll leave it there for your reference. Okay, so this uh, the overall yeah overall uh deal with the whale model is that it gives you a way of predicting near wall behavior without using this Vendris function, which is uh, explicitly dependent on y plus, but for for this this model for this model specifically, it gives you the correct wall behavior, but you will not see you will not see a y plus being uh, given anywhere in this function so y plus is absent from this function so uh, what you have instead are the the rotation and strain tensors there and that gives it the correct wall behavior so this is very good for a large eddy viscosity i mean large eddy simulation uh, wall modeling in the les framework of course, you still need a lot of cells to resolve all the velocities uh, near the wall, but at least it gives you, you know, the correct behavior at near the walls. So, yeah, that's that's all I have for you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys again. Bye bye.